Howdy, I'm Garrett from Lanka Defense, and I have with me my beautiful wife, Julie. Hey. Making a channel debut um, yes. because we have a big announcement. We're celebrating a thousand subscribers to the channel. If I could whistle, I would. <laughs> so go ahead. What's, what's our announcement? Oh, um, I'm pregnant. That's not the announcement, oh, babe. We have sorry. five kids. We're done. Yeah, that's true. The real announcement is we are going to be starting the CyberMiler podcast. Your cybersecurity news from an analyst and a noob. Our intent is every week, uh, probably Sundays, we'll be releasing um, a uh, podcast covering the InfoSec happenings of the previous week. It's going to be super exciting. Should and, tune in. And the and, and uh, as most of you know you're here because uh, of angry cops. Yes. Um, I inspected a suspicious thumb drive that uh, a very interesting character mailed to him, and we thought it'd be fun, uh, along with this announcement, to go over some of the um, comments that we received on that on on my walkthrough video. Which, if you haven't uh, done so yet, you'll want to probably pause this video, go and watch that. Um, walk through video uh, yeah. that I did with the angry cops, suspicious thumb drive, and then come back and, and watch this one. But um, let's go ahead and dive into some of the comments. Uh, some of my favorite comments were all the ones that pointed out my use of PowerPoint, um, you know, saying that it's true that I'm a nerd because I'm <laughs> using PowerPoint. Um, and I, I, I appreciated the one that said I shouldn't be using four by three ratio. Uh, and that fair point fair point there's no reason why i shouldn't be using it's not 60, gonna happen again 65 don't enough. worry guys i'm gonna fix that in the future if if i yeah. use powerpoint at all um, <laughs> I, I i i have an air force background and death by powerpoint is definitely a thing in the dod um, but i learned that it's there's nothing inherently wrong with powerpoint you just got to learn how to use it effectively which and, you have which i think i have congratulations yeah and, and <laughs> And my YouTube channel kind of started as a place for me to um, post reenactments of my cybersecurity conference talks and things like that. Yeah. And, and I use um, PowerPoint there. So, okay, that's good enough. Get now, used to it. <laughs> this comment uh, I, is my favorite one that I've seen. Um, Tam mentions that Virus Total has the ability to not just scan based on the hashes, which is what I did. Um, the uh, of the files, but also you can upload the entire file itself, and it runs through dozens of antivirus products by different vendors um, to see if it identifies any malware. Thanks, so, Tam. Yeah, so like um, that is something that um, would have been very appropriate for this video and demonstrate that at least maybe with like the first file after I do the hashes, do do a full scan of that file itself before I open it. Um, and I think it's time to address some of the criticisms I got, which um, thank goodness for the internet because- I'm not excited. <laughs> because if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't know every single thing that I could have and should have done differently yeah. to further mitigate the risk of our precious homeschool laptop getting infected with malware. Bless your hearts. Thank yeah. you, internet. Yeah, so um, the biggest one was disappointing because it, it must have come from people who um, aren't fans of angry cops or don't pay attention to Big fans. Yeah. Or they don't pay attention to, uh, what he says because he clearly mentioned that he, um, tried plugging in the thumb drive before he sent it to me into a tablet that um, was right. like a buddy's tablet that he yeah. didn't care about. And he could see a bunch of pictures on it, but he, he could tell there were other files that he wasn't able to open, which mm -hmm. is why he, um, sent it to me, ended up sending it to me. But, um, so the, the criticism was that I should have used a powered, um, like hub and plug to plug the thumb drive into it um, instead of directly into the laptop Why? because it could have been a USB killer. Mm. I know the deadly USB killer, which is basically Sounds USB. Bad. It looks like a regular thumb drive, but it's got a bunch of capacitors in it that amplifies, takes the power from the port, amplifies it and sends it back into the computer to kill it. Yeah. Shorts it out. And um, so while uh, it's not very common, he already Not, plugged it in. He plugged it in and saw files yeah. on it. So, um, thanks, okay. but no thanks. So, the, the, another uh, criticism was a little bit um, more thoughtful. They mentioned that um, I used, uh, I turned autoplay off on both the laptop mm -hmm. host and the virtual machine um, so that it didn't engage the storage drive um, immediately when he plugged it in. Well, if it was a rubber ducky or a bad USB, 
which it looks like a thumb drive, but it, it actually mimics a keyboard so that when you plug mm-hmm. it in, it runs it scripts really quickly and it could be, you know, malicious scripts. And um, I think the people who are making this criticism, I think a lot of them might know about rubber duckies in, in theory, but they um, actually don't have uh, very much hands-on experience with them. This um, is not a rubber ducky. This is uh, called a Malduino. It's effectively the same thing by a company called Maltronics, if you want to check them out. So let's actually see what happens when you plug a bad USB into a, uh, into a, a, the laptop while you're in the VM as I was. So here we go. Ready? So that was a a more fair, a more thoughtful um, critique. I could have turned off the internet, not only in the virtual machine, but um, on the laptop host sure. as well to help mitigate the risk of a malicious script reaching out to the, uh, doing something that reaches out to the internet. But as you can see, I could just unplug it. I mean, you'd have, you have, if you're paying attention, you can just unplug it when you yeah, see it, you're doing, watching it doing mm-hmm. things on its own. Uh, something that I think a lot of the critics, uh, the, the, critics um, failed to realize is that I treated this project as a, as a low risk um, exercise. Sure. Um, you know, some people were suggesting that, you know, what I did was extremely stupid because uh, FSB Russian hackers using zero day exploits um, mm-hmm. could have defeated my mitigations. Yeah. YouTubers are their number one targets. Yeah. So yeah. Angry you cops. Gotta watch, out. watch out. Angry cops. Um, so I, I just, uh, I've been doing this a while uh, if for the military and civilian sectors, and uh, I made an, an informed, uh, an assess, assessment that that was not a very likely um, scenario. I expressly mentioned this when I talked about Virus Total, how that it, um, it only it, it's only checking for known malware that's that someone else had previously identified and, and put into the database, right? So I wasn't uh, mitigating against uh, zero day exploits. So um, I, it's a, it goes to a broader point that I often talk about is that um, there's a tendency for infosec analysts and practitioners to get so lost in the technical weeds that they, mm-hmm. they can't see yeah. the forest for the trees that, or they don't realize that their organization and the CEO and the other executives and leaders have competing priorities and interests um, to meet. Um, a broader mission or set of objectives yeah. and cybersecurity doesn't exist in a vacuum. Um, and there's a thing called tolerable risk or acceptable risk. So uh, maybe you can disagree with me all you want, but yeah. I, I made a, uh, an informed assessment and a risk decision um, that I did not think it was likely that this would be um, zero day Russian Just because it malware. can't happen doesn't mean it will. Right? <laughs> yes. So you can't always do everything all the time. Uh, uh, every dollar spent towards cybersecurity is a dollar um, that could have gone towards um, marketing or advertising or sales. And so I think um, analysts would go a lot further in their career if they, as they communicate and prioritize risks and mitigation, if they kind of try to gain that broader perspective. That the, and see it from how the CEO and other mm-hmm. executives see it. Yeah. Um, okay. So without further ado, let's get to our favorite Gary quotes. Right. And now deep thoughts. By- My name's Gary. All right. The Olympics are coming up. I can run fast. My kids are going to dominate in all sports. Like you would not believe. I expect my kids will win big. Gary, his 53,000, 35, 35, yeah, 35,000 kids. If you, if you didn't watch the video, it's, you gotta watch him. He's great. He was an unwitting participant in a government run artificial insemination program. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he and has 35,000 so kids. They about. used his material with yeah, Russians right. to create 35,000 kids. So Russia's going to win big in the Olympics. Thanks to Gary. He can run fast. <laughs> Gary's fast. Okay. Here's uh here's another good one. I have reservations about admitting that I'm a failure as an internet 
international internet star. Oh. I haven't made a cent. It has been a learning experience. Poor Gary. Well, that's so uh, much wasted potential. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he he said that he would he would introduce himself in in, in these uh, uh, in his videos that he's Gary with thirty five thousand kids and only twenty people watch. It, it didn't it didn't draw. Not even like half of his kids are know, watching him. I know. It didn't it didn't have that Poor hook Gary. that draw that he was expecting. Well, anyways, Thanks, again, guys. thank you all for, for finding and uh, hopefully subscribing. A little taste of what you can get on the podcast. Yeah, tune in for uh, Cyber Milers, your cybersecurity news from an analyst and a noob. All right.